Hi, and welcome to the Unashamedly Human podcast, a podcast created to help you get out of your head and into your life. That is, if you want to have more fun, freedom, happiness, peace of mind, and success whilst squeezing the juice out of every area of your life. Join Jackie Ford every Thursday and listen in to her warm Scottish tones, wise heart and wonderful sense of humour as she interviews guests and discusses what it means to be unashamedly human. Hi everybody and welcome to the Unashamedly Human podcast. It's been a minute. I, I, I keep starting podcasts and then I sort of get involved in life and family and being a grandmother and, you know, sort of decorating our new house and making plans and really enjoying life. So I'm really sorry that I keep going away and enjoying my life and forgetting to record the podcast. I had an experience about a month ago during the Edinburgh Festival. I was out with my husband, and you can see my guest laughing. I was out with my husband and my daughter and her, my three-year-old granddaughter and my one-year-old grandson. And the babies just love going on the bus. So we were on the number eight bus. I remember it very clearly. We were on the number eight bus and we were going to the museum. And at the bus stop, we were just about to go off the bus. I'm standing waiting to go off the bus. And this soul came down the stairs and without even a thought, I went, hello, you. And this person looked at me as though I just spat in her face, basically. And she went, do you know me? I went, yeah, yeah, I do. do." She says, what's my name? Now, I'm a postmenopausal woman. (laughs) Putting me on the spot to tell me, what is your names? Not a good idea. Just as I'm trying to coordinate my grandchildren off the bus as well. And I said, look, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. I, can't, I just can't remember. But I know that I know you. And we got off the bus and she's like, can you remember my name? Do, do you know? Do, can you remember? And I was like, no, I can't. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. And I got home and I laughed with it. I mean, I laughed with it with my, my, my husband and my daughters, you know, and I was like, this is hysterical because I know I know this woman. And... Um, <laughs> I got home and I got my phone. I went, it's Deborah. Deborah's been a Facebook friend for God knows how many years. We've been at the same conferences and meetings and goodness knows what else. So we've we've met. And it was just one of those moments. And so I messaged Deborah and I said, it was you. It was me. I said, and my soul spoke to you because normally I would be, I I just wouldn't say, I wouldn't say anything. I just go, I think I'm that person. And it just came out and it was so effusive. Kind of like, oh, hello, you. <laughs> What's that? Well, it was hilarious. It was, I think that's kind of what threw me because you spoke to me as if we had spoken earlier on this morning, you know, as if we were in conversation all the time, best friends, knew each other really well. It was kind of, and I'm like, who you are and it was so out of context and I was in Scotland visiting my eldest daughter lives in Scotland I live in North Devon um, and my eldest daughter um, lives in Edinburgh and we were on the bus yeah going in the same bus um, the same bus, obviously. And I came down the stairs and this lady, you know, with grandchildren of this, you know, not the Jackie Ford who I know, who doesn't you know, she's there with the children and grandchildren and sort of said, Thing like this. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> it was so funny. And it's hilarious that I never thought to say, what is your name? Or to oh. tell you what my name was. <laughs> you probably thought I was a performer in the French Festival. <laughs> Birth, and my daughter said to me, who is it? Do you know her? And I was like, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I know her. And I, I, I kind of would turn around and stick, but I, I don't want to stare at you to say, like, so funny. And, and then, you know, we laughed about it for a little while and I went home and just completely forgot about it, didn't think anything. And then when I got your text message, when I got your message and it says, that was you, wasn't it? And I was like, oh my gosh. And then it sort of all fell into place, but it was hilarious. It's such a funny story. <laughs> I mean, it, it so is. It, it, it was lovely. And um, that is kind of the way I speak to people. <laughs> I just... <laughs> You know, I just I don't I don't see any barriers. I don't see you know. It's kind of like 
you know, I'm here. Hiya, how you doing? You know, I guess maybe just years of working with the public, you know, that it just, you just, you just how you show up. Anyway, it cra- it cracked me up. And when I told my daughter, she was laughing as well. So, um, yeah, my part, I was with my partner and my daughter and they thought it was hilarious that, uh-huh. you know, this, obviously they saw you, they saw what happened. And, and for quite some time, you know, even over lunch and later, they kept saying, have you got any idea who that lady is yet? Have you thought of who this is? <laughs> No, just some strange performer from the Fringe Festival. Don't don't worry about her, you know. Anyway, you guys all know who I am, so let me introduce you to Deborah. Now, Deborah is head of happiness at Dare to Be You, and Dare to Be You is all about knowing who you really are, both as a spiritual being, but also as a human, which you know is my jam as well. And about finding, you know, sort of that lovely balance between there to be able to consciously create your best life and a life that you amaze yourself with. I, I love that, you know, a life where you spend yourself constantly in awe and like, oh God, look, that happened. This is amazing. You know, and Deborah says this kind of more or less describes her life. Um, and she's been working in this field with the principles for over 10 years and she prides herself and actually walking the walk. Not, not just talking about it. And, and it's really, really interesting to me, Deborah, because you can tell, you can absolutely tell when somebody is living their truth, because that's what you're talking about here, is living your truth and, and, and living it on a daily basis. Now, Deborah's story involves escaping from an abusive relationship and turning her life around and helping her children find their happy place in spite of all they've been through, which that just fills my heart. And, you know, for her building a really successful business, it's given her a deep grounding. Um, and she knows the best ways to help other people who have dreams that can have seen that they're never working out or they have a, a spiritual awakening and then they find themselves back in the thick of what got them searching in the first place. Because we all know that spiritual awakenings are not the sunshine and roses and glitter um, moment of one's life. They can be really murky and, and, and quite difficult and dark as well. So Deborah loves what she does. She doesn't love meeting people on the number eight bus in Edinburgh, but she absolutely loves what she does. And she loves playing and deepening um, our own knowing about who she is. And our, our latest project is one that's called um, Field of Dreams. And she's buying a piece of land and building her dream home on that land. And uh, it's really lovely to hear that this is, is becoming possible for you and you're stepping towards it day by day. Now, I will put all of Deborah's um, details in the the blurb with this podcast. And I'll also give you some details. If you ever wish to say hello to Deborah. Don't do what I do. I'll give you step-by-step instructions of how to approach her quietly with a photograph with your name on it. <laughs> so she knows who you are. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, you're never going to let me forget this, are you? <laughs> no, because it's funny. It's just really funny. It was so funny for me, too. I mean, it really, really was. Deborah, you know, sort of, you say you've been on a journey sort of the past 10 years. Definitely. Have you, have you, yeah. Have you always been searching? Have you all did you always know there was something or was it just uh you just came across the principles? What happened? Yes, yeah, so I was not a searcher. No, that that wasn't my um path. I had been in um this relationship which was incredibly unhealthy and now when I look at it I can see um I can see my part in that I can see that that relationship could not with who I was being with who I was showing up as that that couldn't have been anything different um and so to me what I see there is we were both victims of insecurity believing the thinking that we were having believing that was how the world worked and what we needed to do and we were stuck I I got out of that relationship things got so bad and and violent and and it was actually something that happened with one of my children and I I had I had to leave I was told the social services would take my son if I so I ended up in a refuge Mm -hmm. um and it was kind of then I found myself with my my two daughters were one of my daughters lived with my sister by that time because I had sent her away because it wasn't safe I didn't leave the relationship I sent my daughter away but there you go um and my other daughter 
it was getting increasingly dangerous for her to be at home um, and my son was struggling at school. So I found myself then with my son who was nine years old at the time and my daughter um, who was a teenager. She was 70, 16, 17. And I just had no idea how to parent my children. They had, you know, they had lost all respect, all they saw me as a waste of space which was you know quite true to be fair <laughs> it wasn't a bad it pretty much was was who I was being um <clears throat> and my elder daughter we always had a good relationship um but you know again I hadn't been I hadn't been there for her as a mom in a way that now that I can see I would have liked to have been so we were in a mess so it was at that point that I was looking for how on earth do I parent these three broken children? Mm. Who am I? What what do I do? How how do you do this life? I'd been in this relationship for over 20 years and it was like the person that I was when I got into this relationship, one of the things that had been very prominent on this relationship was that there was, you don't change, you know, what you liked the first day I met you, you still like now, what you did, what you, you know, so <clears throat> I hadn't grown up, I hadn't had the space, <clears throat> I'd never explored who I was what do I like what colors do I like what mm. foods do I like you know I liked the color that I liked then I liked the food that I liked. so I hadn't grown up or changed or any of those kinds of things so it was at that point and I don't think I it wasn't so much that I was thinking there was something else or exploring spirituality or any of that kind of thing it was just like I don't know what words we were allowed to say on this post podcast it was just like oh my gosh everything <laughs> anything unashamedly human <laughs> <laughs> it was like mm -hmm. huh, what mm -hmm. do I do now have, have no idea so I was looking just for help to to live how the, how the hell do I do this mm -hmm. um, and I came across um Jamie Smart and it was just at that, that moment Jamie Smart was moving away from the NLP stuff that he was doing and moving into the principles and he was just talking about it and putting some stuff out there and I just heard he put something out and um and I just listened to this thing and quite literally what happened to me was I fell on the floor and started to cry because what I heard in this thing was your children are broken and I hadn't realized how heavily for many years I think I had been carrying this all I had ever wanted my my um dreams for my life uh, had always been as a as a young child I've got exercise I've got an exercise book from when I was a kid I think I was about 11 when I first went to secondary school and I wrote I'm gonna have children and and I wrote the name Gemma Kate and my eldest daughter is Gemma Kate so I wanted children I wanted a, a relationship and children that's what I wanted and I was kind of like you have messed everything up that you ever wanted and you have you haven't got these three happy children you have got three very messed up kids and I was really 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 ashamed deeply ashamed hated myself and I hadn't realized until I heard those words just how heavily I was carrying that shame um and that disgust for myself and I, I heard a little bit like when you saw me on the bus and you kind of saw something and then it's like what I don't know what it is I don't know what it is who is she I don't know it was a little in that moment I saw the okayness in everything but it was a sort of a fleeting moment it never the moment that I had you know something shifted and changed in me but then what was it how you know like when I said well what's was my it, name and you're yeah. like oh. <laughs> was it did they call that it's a glimmer a glimmer is the, the yeah. latest phrase for it yeah 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 yes I, I would say it was that I, I saw something and could not unsee it mm -hmm. um, and for a few weeks, quite a few people thought I'd gone a bit mad because I kept saying, everything's OK, everything's OK, it's OK, it's all right, it's all right, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what happened, you're all right and I'm all right. And then it would be like, well, what about this and what about this and what about this and what about this? And and I would just get completely stuck because I had no idea how to implement, how to answer those questions. But this happened, mom, but this was, you know, and then I, I, I was stuck. But every time, as soon as I kind of, 
um, maybe went to sleep or, or whatever, this feeling of, you know, this is OK, would come back. And I guess it was at that point, if you say that, that would be the point that I became a searcher, I think. Mm -hmm. Then it was like, right, what is this? What is this within me that no matter, you know, when they come and say, yeah, but do you not remember when this happened? Do you not remember this abuse? Do you not remember this day? Do you not remember that that happened? And then I would be stuck in that. Well, yes, I do. And obviously you're going to be damaged from that. And obviously, yeah, there will be repercussions and blah, blah, blah. And then I would, I don't know, go away, go to sleep or something. And this knowing within me that the truth was we were all OK and that was made up would come back. But I couldn't put it into words. I couldn't I didn't I didn't know how I didn't know why I didn't know why that was making sense when at the outside world and everybody else was kind of telling me the opposite. I didn't know why this kept making sense to me. Mm -hmm. So it was then that I was determined to find out, OK, what was it Jamie was talking about? What are these principles? What is within me? What is within all of us? And um, yeah, ever since then, I have been deepening my understanding of that, learning how to articulate it, learning how to share that and help other people make sense of that truth that they have within them. Mm -hmm. So we can be unashamedly human. You know, I can be unashamedly human now. <laughs> And I do yeah. have moments of shame. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? That's, I, I, I mean, your story is is so is so heartfelt. You know, I could really feel. I could feel your journey, and 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 I love that. But the knowing that you had and have is is very strong too. That yes. the fact that you could go to sleep and sort of it's almost like that factory reset we talk about isn't it like when we're tired and when the world doesn't see things the way we see them because we've had this kind of glimpse or glimmer um on an insight that says no this is life works differently than the way I thought it did and when we're having to sort of try to rationalize it but we don't have the words yet that's tiring it's exhausting and it's easy to get lost back in that, isn't it? That that feeling of, well, maybe maybe it isn't right. Maybe that that's not what this is, you know. And and I love the way you explained it by saying, I just went to sleep, and then this just the knowing came back through me that said, no, we are okay. You know that just so beautifully explains our humanity that we're not machines. <laughs> yes. We're not machines. We get tired and when we get tired. It's so easy for us to drop into a lower state of mind. And when we're in that lower state of mind, we have a habit to have more of a propensity to believe what we're thinking. Absolutely. Absolutely. And over the years, I have had the opposite um, experience too. Like when um, sometimes I will have a, a good day and I will think everything's okay and then I will go to sleep and for some reason my thinking seems to churn up and cortisol. you know cortisol <laughs> 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 and then it will feel you know I might wake up almost having a panic attack and, and feeling things aren't okay and I know a lot of my clients that I speak to have that experience too and it's like yeah that happens and what I have also seen through being on this journey and looking is understanding what is going on there makes that you know, the, I probably you know I, I haven't got your background and um, cortisol wouldn't have come to me but it's like yeah your thinking can do that to you you know this all of this stuff that is coming in all of these you know those the things we're bombarded all the time with life works outside in life works outside in life works outside in and mm -hmm. you know we we have these glimpses and we have this knowing but also it can be overwhelmed it can mm -hmm. feel you know whatever it is it churns up something in me and sometimes my thinking can go on a rampage page and I can feel that I have lost that connection to that glimpse mm -hmm. but what what I really 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 love I think is and this is very much you know um what I I speak to my clients about and where I try to take people is just to find out within you you know I have my words and I have things that I know that bring me back and I have things you know the, there are certain words I can say to myself and and things that I know that when my thinking goes on one of those rampages that I can kind of bring myself back if you like or know even the knowing that I'm going to come back mm -hmm. but all of those so it is like seeing okay 
what is it, and this to me is where the principles comes in, what is it that underpins all this? And to me, what one of the things I know is I couldn't have had any of the experiences in my life that I've had, the, the, the terrible ones, the ones or, you know, the ones that I really didn't enjoy when I was in them, the ones that I feel ashamed about when I look back on the ones, any of those or the fantastic ones. You know, those first moments when I held each of my children in my arms, when I looked at them, you know, those moments when I found out that I was pregnant, those, you know, fantastic things, amazing things, you know, moments in my business, moments when clients have sent me things and said my whole life has changed none of them I couldn't have had any of those experiences if life did not work the way that it did mm -hmm. and it's like I know the good and the bad is me working perfectly mm -hmm. it's very easy to think when you know when our thinking is overwhelming us or we're in a bad situation or we've messed up our circumstances whatever it's very easy to feel ashamed and to feel that we are broken or have done something wrong but what I like, what underpins this is, no, you work perfectly. Because if you didn't work perfectly, you couldn't screw it up. If you didn't work perfectly, you couldn't create this beautiful stuff you're creating. Mm -hmm. so all of it points me back to how perfectly I work. Mm -hmm. And and I, that that is always helpful to me to come back to. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to feel this. You wouldn't be able to dislike that person or not want that or to have said that or to have sent that stupid email that you should never have sent if it didn't work perfectly. <laughs> Absolutely, Deborah. And again, you you know, you're speaking my jam completely here. You know that that it's it's so important that the more to me, it's especially women because we're the primary caregivers and most of us because of our parents and our grandparents how they were brought up during wars and you know tough times that they didn't have the information that we've got now information that I would love to have had in my 20s but I didn't yeah. have it it wasn't available to me <clears throat> that you know I don't know whether you I know, I know you will be like me. Like the minute my daughter had her children, the grandbabies, it was that was another time of transformation for me, because yeah. that's the point where my daughter changed from maiden to mother, and I changed from mother to maven or crone or whatever you want to say. Um, I don't know. It was just a label. I don't really care, but that was a really interesting time for me. It was quite a dark time because it brought up lots of emotions, lots of unprocessed emotions, um, lots of things in my, my childhood and in my growing up that I'd never processed. You know, I just mm. hadn't at the time, I just so bloody busy. I just hadn't processed these things. And I've always had a habit of trying to process alone, you know, rather than trying to process with other people. That was just me. Um, and yeah, some people go, oh, Jackie, that's a fawn troll. <laughs> I'll go, yeah, 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 maybe it was. I really don't care. You know, I had a great childhood, blah, blah, blah. You know, we all have our quirks. Um, but with my daughter, she's reparenting herself through yeah. the birth of her child. Yes. And our relationship, you know, I'm reparenting our relationship is she reparents her child. And oh my God, Deborah, it's wonderful. The conversations, <laughs> the yep. they're so raw and they're so honest. And you know, things that 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 I would have said that my mother had said, that I would have said to my kids, I'd never dream of saying that to my grandchild. Mm. You know, things that were you wouldn't automatically go, that's shameful. You, you, you're putting shame on you know like if well, for example like if if the wee one when she was toilet training had a pee pee you know and had a wee accident I'm like oh it's not a problem hun don't worry that's okay everybody has accidents it's not a big deal you know or she, she's climbing all over me and she accidentally you know makes my nose bleed or something I'm like it's okay yeah. hun don't worry about it you know not a problem whereas I remember my mother being angry with me when I did these things I remember her blaming me I had a urinary tract infection when we were on holiday in Butlins and I was eight I remember her blaming me for ruining the holiday mm. <laughs> it's just 
you know, but, but I can look back in that and go, oh my God, mum, you should never have done that. What was that about? What were you going through, love? Yes. You know? Yeah. That, that's the point, isn't it? That is oh. the point. Yeah. It's, that was their learnt behaviour, if you like, to, exactly. to shame. And I think that's, you know, I can see the same when I look at my grandmother and my mum and then my mum and how she parented me and exactly the same. You know, it really I watch my daughter parent her children. And definitely there was a moment in me of of actual jealousy, actually, Mm -hmm. of kind of seeing, look what you have available to you. Look what look what I know that I can help you with and it was kind of like my mum I I, my parents loved me and I had a good childhood but when I look exactly you know the resources and what my parents what my mum had to give me were not you know it was it was like yeah you should be ashamed of yourself for for thinking that or doing that or being that person Mm -hmm. you know you have to be and I know you know one of the things Um, that I can see that set me on the path that that I took and this is no blame to my mom whatsoever but um, and I know you know anyone who knows me I've shared this story but looking back I can see me and my mom are polar opposites we are very different people I am very outgoing you know I am the happiest when I'm on a stage with a microphone that's my happy place yeah you're Um, you're definitely my soul sister (laughs) 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 who doesn't speak to me in buses but never mind (laughs) that would like be you know if you said to my mom do you want me to stick pins in your eyes or do you want to stand on the stage with a microphone she'd go pins pins give me you know she that that would be her worst nightmare so from a very young age she was trying to protect me from things that in her world would be horrific but things in my world I wanted to do and I wanted to be and I am like my grandma on my dad's side and she didn't get on with my my you know typical mother in law mother you know um, mother in law um, daughter in law mother in law relationship. And from a very young age, I heard her talking to people and saying she didn't like my grandma. And I also um, everybody in the family. I am like I am my grandma reincarnate. My grandma has gone now, but you know I am that I am her. And so I managed to put two and two together inside my head and decide that my mom doesn't like my grandma I am like my grandma therefore my mom doesn't like me therefore so innocent isn't it so innocent Mm. on all sides all Mm. sides you know I can see my innocence in this Mm. I can see her innocence you know these were overheard conversations that she clearly needed to get out of her system because Mm. she was struggling with things and you know it's true I am like my grandma she wasn't saying you know and and everybody told me that and, and it's true I can see it Um, I'm now very proud to be like my grandma. My grandma was an incredibly strong woman ahead of her time now when I look, um, you know, at who she was. But I then decided that I could not be me because I'm clearly not good enough and because my mom doesn't love me and I'm being things that I have no business being. And so that was my story, mm-hmm. um, which is why my business is called Dare to Be You, because I can see the damage that I did to myself deliberately. You know, every intuitive thought, every nudge, everything that I had within me to be me, I either ignored or deliberately did the opposite because I was trying my hardest not to be this person that I shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the the... the we are all unique human beings. You know, we have this place within us where we are all the same. We, you know, the, the principles, what underpins this is, is oneness, is that. But then we all have our unique things to do out in the world. And, you know, if we don't within ourselves nurture that uniqueness and, and you know, I, I know still one of my tendencies can be, you know, I'll be on the here, I'll tell, oh, I need to be more like Jackie. Oh, I need to be more like Jackie. I go, oh, I shouldn't think. And it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> be you. Yes, we can be soul sisters. Yes, you have a lot of things that are the same. Yes, do it. But remember to be you. Absolutely. You are perfect. Absolutely. I remember writing a, a blog about that years ago, um, Deborah. And it's like, you know, when I was starting to write blogs, I wanted to sound like Michael Neal and I wanted to sound like Elsie Spittle. And no matter, I just couldn't because whenever I did it, it just sounded like me. And, and you know, people would write to me and they go, Jackie, please don't take this the wrong way. But I love your blogs because they're so ordinary. 
And I was like, well, why would I be upset about that? Because that's how I see this understanding. It's the most practical spiritual understanding I've ever experienced in my life. And after years, I had years of searching, Deborah, I was the, you know, the the, the woman that was on every bloody course and had every book, you know, and despite Amazon not being around. And, you know, I think a lot of the times I felt I could just inhale the book without reading it and, you know, something would happen to me and I'd change. But I spent a lot of money a lot of money so when I came across the principles which I did way before I knew they were the principles because I came across Richard Carlson's work um, and didn't understand that he had actually him and his father had actually studied with Sid and then that's when they wrote Don't Sweat the Small Stuff yeah you know um Mm -hmm. and it was um it was Judy Banks that told me that uh, Sid's wife and then you know sort of later on when I did hear about Sid and I heard him speaking, I went, oh my God, he, he sounds like my dad and his brothers round the fire at Christmas time after a few drinks, you know, just chilled mm. and laid back and shooting the breeze about life. And I just, I felt, I felt like I was home, mm. you know, and, and I loved that. There was just this ordinariness about how we work as human beings that is so available to us now with the internet, with Instagram and TikTok and, you know, (laughs) and it's just like, oh my God, you guys who are in this generation don't realise how lucky you are that, you know, if you choose it wisely, the the information is there and it's just off the chart. I've learned so much. (laughs) You know, oh my God, you know, from... It is amazing what is available out there. Absolutely. Isn't it? And it's that this whole thing about everybody's a student and everybody's a teacher. So I'm mm-hmm. so glad you said what you said. You know, like nobody's any better than any of us because we're all unique. We're all the same. Mm-hmm. We're all unique. <laughs> and that's what makes it important to find your teacher or your coach at the stage of the journey that you're on. Because it's a it's a journey. Oh my God, it's not a one and done thing this it's a journey (laughs) so you're going to go through evolution after evolution after evolution and you're in for a fantastic ride and learning to be comfortable being uncomfortable is one of the best gifts you can actually give yourself throughout this journey so it sounds like in your journey Deborah you're helping people from all all kind of walks of life settle into the the knowing of who they really are underneath who they think they are. I, I, to me, I, I think that is the the bit that um that that changes everything. It's kind of like um when I came across the principles for for a little while, I really, really, really studied the principles and kind of threw everything else out, if you like. But I could see that that was a part of the journey, something that I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And then I got clear what they, you know, or or you know, we, I don't mean I know it all because we absolutely don't. But I had enough of a grasp and enough of an understanding and something with you know, enough within me. And then I um, very much went and started to look at a lot of other spiritual things and, and all sorts of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, it's like, it's that, underpinning when we when we can continue to come back and I actually the word God works incredibly well for me um it's not I'm not religious and it's not to me um I think it's a shame that a lot of people have you know, it feels like religion owns God so we can't the minute we hear that word it, it's it's lumped in with that um but that word works well for me inner being source of all whatever but the knowing of that if everything that you are doing is underpinned with that, mm-hmm. and this is what I see about the whole creation side of it and what I'm up to now, it's kind of like, okay, I know that and I can continue to come back to that. And when going out here and does all this, it gets scary. And to me, it's a little bit like, you know, I watch my grandchildren, I take them to the park and they know I'm there and they go wild. You know, they go all and they, and they go down the slide and they go on the thing and it's, grandma, look at me doing this and look, and I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And I am there, you know, they're not 
afraid of what they're doing because they're going to come back to their mom or their grandma. They're going to come back home when they've done this. And to me, it's a similar thing. You know, this understanding, it's like, yeah, I can come back to you. I get to play as, as being human. I get to create stuff. I get to, you know, I have these desires within me. And I don't think that is a mistake either. You know, when I look back at what I did to myself, all of my desires and all of my pulls and all of those things, I ignored them. But now, you know, I'm the polar opposite to that. It's like anything, yeah, I'm there. If that's if that's what I'm being pulled in this moment, then go for it, do it. Because we get to play in this, the best playground. It's It's unbelievable, the playground that we have got here. And underpinning this playground is this safety, is home, is God, is love, whatever, you know, the principles, whatever it looks. And to me, so long as we have enough, and sometimes we we know that, you know, it's not, oh, you have to know the principles or you, what is that for you? Find the words, find the feeling, find something in you that that underpinning is. Because if you have got that, and to me, that is what, you know, when you see people who have got everything supposedly from outside, you know, they've got the perfect partner, they've got the perfect, they've got money, they've got the house, they've got the whatever, they've got all these things and they're, they're unhappy. It's because they haven't got that thing that underpins it all. Mm -hmm. And when we have this thing that underpins it all, and I think one of the things that is missing and definitely something I, I am interested in, which is why I love the creation side of things, is I feel like the message, whether I, you know, how I got this message or how it was, and I see this in and especially women, it's like, well, you can have either or. You can have this underpinning or you can have a really nice house and partner and money. You can't, or, or whatever your dream is. But you can't have this and you can't be spiritual and have human stuff, have money and be happy in the human realm. You're either going to have this or this and more and more and more. You know, my thing is, no, we don't live in a yes, this, not this. We live a yes, this and this world. Like there's nothing held back from us. When we understand this underpinning, why would anything be held back from us? Mm -hmm. If we have a desire within us and a pull to do something, to have something, to be something, then there is no way, you know, that is, that is, that desire comes from this underpinning. So why is it going to kind of give you, it would be like you saying to your children, you know, here you go, have something really nice to eat. No, you can't have it. I'm not going to give it you. It's like, it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So these desires, these things that we want to create, we are called to create them because yeah, play, create. You absolutely have within you. And to me, those two things, and, and this is what I mean about the balance between them. Yeah, go create what you are called to create from a knowing of who you are, because it will be the best fun you will ever have. Mm. My youngest daughter has watched me all my life. <clears throat> I've lived my life that way, Deborah. If I've wanted to do something, I've just gone and done it. I've always been that way and it has not made sense to other people but it's always made sense to me mm -hmm. and my husband says oh Jackie's away to faff again because <laughs> I'm away faffing I'm doing my thing I'm doing my thing because I know I just know it's it's good for me it's taken me all over the world it's taken me to <clears throat> all sorts of strange places both in Scotland and elsewhere and my youngest daughter, um, who's doing a, a PhD in creative writing at the moment, she's writing about um, about Alistair Gray, who's a, a famous Scottish writer, um, who the, there's a movie of one of his books coming out that's winning all sorts of awards in Venice at the moment. And um, her PhD is all about him. And she sat on the couch the other day there and she said, Mum, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I said, really? And she says, I'm a wee bit worried. And I just said to her, are you worried about something that hasn't happened yet? Or are you worried because you think you should be worried? And she just laughed. And I said to her, I've never met anybody in my life, Lauren, who 
has lived from her knowing the way you live from your knowing. As a child in Edinburgh Gymnastics Club, six years old, she says, Mum, she'd only been doing it six months, Mum, I'm going to win the cup and beat this girl who was like, been doing it for years. I was like, okay, how do you do that? She did it. Played basketball for Scotland, MVP, European MVP, most valuable player, you name it. You know, named after again and again and again. Amazing. Because she created that in her mind. She wanted that. Yes. Yeah. She didn't study for her hires the way she was meant to study for her hires to get into university. And she kept dropping subjects like flies because she said, I only need these two subjects, mum. That's all I need to be able to get in. And she kept dropping them and dropping them. I'm like, I trusted her. I'm like, I trust you because I I know you. I know how you work. You know, I know it doesn't make sense to your teachers. I know they're all calling me and giving me crap about this, but I know you (laughs) and I trust you. So Mm. um, she was to pass her maths. That was the one she had to pass to get into university. And she was just, she was a nightmare with it. She really was, Deborah. But I kept going back to my knowing about her. She'll be fine. Oh. This will work out. I know it'll work out yeah. for her. I don't need to be worried. This will be okay. And she went on holiday with her friend, you know, the six-year holiday. They all went away. And she phones me from um, from somewhere in Europe. And she's like, guess who's going to university then? <laughs> she got her mask high. <laughs> I was crying with happiness and with relief. <laughs> She always knew. And so I, I reminded her of all of this. And I said, "Hun, you know better than anybody else does. Yeah. You decide and have an intent for something. It works out. Trust yeah. that. I said, I love that you know you don't want a 95 job. You don't want to work in an office. I went, oh, my God, to have that strength and conviction to know that's not who you are. I said, that's huge. So I know you're going to be okay. You just have to trust you're going to be okay too. I just, I just love that. And what I also love about that is the how, you know, the variety, like your daughter, you said you've always lived that way and your daughter has always lived that way. And what I see is fantastic, what amazing role models. But what I also want to say is I never lived that way till you know I've been learning to lean in that into that since 2011 since I came across this understanding so what I see is the enormous hope you know if people are listening to this and thinking oh well I didn't start when I was six years old it's like so what start when you're 60 start when you're 70 start start today you know there is there's one best time there are two best times to start something when you're first born and now you know, and, and whichever you're at. So, and um, my daughter, I have a, a, a beautiful story about my um, middle, my second daughter, my middle child. Um, she wanted to be an author. And um, this was, um, I've got two grandchildren, my oldest grandson, he's four. And then I've got a granddaughter who's two. So when my grandson, when she was um, at home with him, when he was tiny, she just started having these ideas for writing and she'd never written um, before. And she just had this idea to write a book. And so I just said, well, we'll just write it. And so she started this writing was just flowing through her and she just started writing this book. And then obviously she started looking into it and she's like, I want to be a published author and I want to be a traditionally published author. So I'm kind of on my journey and and all of this. And by now she's trusting me and trusting the things that I'm sharing. So I'm saying to her, "Okay, we'll set that intention. That's what you're going to do then if that is what is coming through you. And, you know, she was on writers groups and they're all saying, she go, mom, well, maybe I'll have to sell publish maybe I said what do you want what is your what are you called I said there is nothing wrong with self-publishing there's nothing wrong with any of how you do this what is your calling on this and she's like I want to be a traditionally published author with my first book I said well be that then do that I said if that is your calling do that know that's possible and so you know we had lots of amazing conversations and guess what 
She is a traditionally published author. She is writing her second book. Her first book has published and has done incredibly well. Um, and she is now writing her second book with the same the same publisher are are backing her to do this. She's got a book deal, you know, she can carry on writing. And I think sometimes she forgets the amazingness of, we forget the amazingness yes. of who we are and what we have done and what we have achieved in these ways. You know, it's like, yeah. And this, it looks, when something like that has happened for us, to us, through us, whatever it is, it then, it looks and feels so ordinary to us mm -hmm. because it's now who we are, are, who we have become and who we are is so familiar and ordinary to us that we don't think twice about it. But all of these things bring us to new dimensions of who we are and what is possible for us. And I just, you know, I'm amazed by her and blown away by, by what she has achieved and what I know she is going to continue to achieve. And I see that is true, you know, whether we realize this years ago and we've been living this way forever or whether you're hearing this and thinking wow is that possible for me because i have never lived that way absolutely yes it, mm. this this is who we are this is what when we lean into those nudges that truth what we're called to do it it's amazing what mm. we create absolutely and i know you probably like me as well that you work with women who they're in areas of life where they, they, they follow these nudges, don't question them, but then they have other areas of their life where they don't and they second guess <laughs> themselves. And it's because they think that's different, you know, and, and that cracks yes. me up all the time, you know, as though that's a completely different thing and the principles don't apply here. You're like, well, mm, maybe they, they do. do. They do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's no different. No, that, that that's really lovely. It, it's lovely that, that it's lovely to hear your journey and to hear how you're helping other people in the world Deborah because it's just it's so important you know that, that that voices are heard and you know whether you're doing it formally informally it doesn't really matter what matters is that you're speaking your truth and that you're sharing your knowing and whatever way feels right for you to share it so I am grateful that you're in this world and that you're doing what you're doing. I, I really, really am. I love it. Thank you. And I am grateful for number eight buses. <laughs> <laughs> ah, me too. Me too. It, yeah, it, it's, it's been lovely to actually, you know, to have that giggle with you and, you know, sort of to recognise our own humanity in that moment. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, how we're not good put in the spot. <laughs> If only I reached out for my phone. Deborah, you've been an absolute joy to have on the Unashamedly Human podcast. And before we go, um, is there anything that you're working on at the moment that you want to share with everybody that, that you know? Well, the thing we didn't get to speak about it, but that's fine, um, is the field of dreams. And that fits into perfectly exactly what you were saying at the end there, where we have these areas where we trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then I think we have areas where not so much we second guess Absolutely. ourselves you know this it doesn't work here and for me definitely the field of dreams what I'm up to at the moment is is my kind of um foray into that if you like because there definitely are there are like around relationships other people all of those kinds of things I am really clear what, how this works and then I had this um desire to um buy a plot of land and build a house and it was like you're crazy you're mad stop do not do that and I hadn't realized how long I had had that it was actually only the other day I was speaking to um a, a friend and I, I talked about what I was doing and she said oh yeah 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 I remember you saying that over 10 years ago and I was like wow has that has it been that long that I've actually had this desire but anyway so the long and short of it is I decided right okay go with this, follow these nudges and, and do this. And alongside what I'm doing with the field of dreams, I have no idea. Actually, as we stand at the moment, when I first saw the plot of land that I'm buying, there was no way I did not have the money to buy it. I did not have the resources. I didn't have anything. Um, and over a year later, that plot of land was still on the market, which in and of itself, well, I know the reason why it was because that land was always mine from the very second. It's actually a huge, great, agricultural barn that I want to convert into a home for me and my partner um and I'm now in the process of buying that land so 
as as we're speaking here, any time in the next month or two, that land will belong to me. And the next thing that I want to do is build my home on there. And at this point, it doesn't look like I have the resources, the money, the wherewithal to do that. And I am going to do it. And alongside that, you know, I'm inviting people to um, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel to follow my journey, because I'm going to be talking about that from every perspective. And along with that, I'm doing things like I am um, starting a creative circle if people want to get involved in the the energy behind creation you know how we do this and there will be various other offerings alongside that that I, you know I'm going to be talking about so come find out about the field of dreams if you want to see as I said at this moment yeah it looks like the land is going to belong to me at some point in the near future and um, I have zero idea how I'm going to build the house there. <laughs> and that's it you know this is real-time creation what what happens so <laughs> with all its ups and downs and twists and turns and everything I remember we, we yeah that's beautiful and as I said all of that information will be in the blurb at the bottom of the podcast <clears throat> I remember when Jerry and I moved out of Edinburgh and all the girls went to uni Deborah and um, we moved from a home we'd lived in for 16 years and when the kids all left we actually upsized you know sort of to a house with five beds sea views one and a half acres and we had the best adventure of a lifetime there we really, really did. We were there during COVID. I had a sailor tan. I've never had a sailor tan in my life. I've never even had a tan in my life. But, you know, we were just meant to be there. And I remember saying to my husband one day, I was going up the stairs in that house. And I just heard this whisper, you're here to heal and be healed. Mm. That's what that house was for me. It was part of my journey. You know, and, and people don't understand why now I live in a yeah. Georgian ground floor apartment in Edinburgh, the new town, which is the complete opposite of what we had, because this is where I'm meant to be now. And you just, mm -hmm. that's just it. Yeah. You know, you just know. Yeah. And, and, and I love it. that you know. Yeah, that that's it. Th this is what, and I also know that this journey is, is to be shared. I, I know that you know this part of my journey is to be shared as it is unfolding mm, that's gorgeous <laughs> okay everybody thank you for listening to the unashamedly human podcast um please follow deborah and find out more about the field of dreams that that would be an absolute joy and know that i certainly will be finding out all about that and keeping in touch with her and uh, continue to listen to the unashamedly human podcast and subscribe to our, my YouTube channel and to the podcast itself to get the fresh episodes and also um, we've been talking about the school for some time it's going under a bit of a rehaul at the moment and um, the new launch date for the Unashamedly Human School in its new format will be November so if you haven't already signed up for the waitlist or you haven't signed up to hear about the pre-launch webinars please do because um it's an intention that I set years ago uh, to do this, but to do it my way and to do it in a way that made sense to me using everything that I know about life, health, psychology, spirituality, all coming into the one space. Um, so it's very different to any of the schools that are out there at the moment. So lots of love to you, Deborah. Lots of love to the family. And um, I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Could be larger than life, bigger than the world. Living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. You could fly higher than the sky, shine brighter than the stars. You can live all you ever wanted. Yeah. Larger, larger, yeah. Bigger, 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 bigger,
yakın.